Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today we're going to have a little old look at the Stuart Semple white ink which is called Wink. I'd noticed this little beauty on many advertising campaigns through Facebook and obviously I've bought Stuart Semple stuff before and I thought I'd give this a little whirl too. It boasts to being an incredibly white, opaque ink and I thought, well, we could all do with one of them, couldn't we? It says it's great for using with a brush or with a dip pen, however you want to apply it. So I thought, well, let's do three pictures and semi put it to the test and just have some fun with it. And the first picture I'm doing, well, I'm kind of finishing it off actually. It was a doodle I'd been doing whilst doing my job and I thought I'm gonna save using a gel pen on this and use this white ink for it instead so I thought well it's best to spare you from drawing all those details in and let's just put this product to the test and I was quite happy with how it performed to a certain extent with my glass dip pen here now I will hasten to add it's not my favourite glass dip pen but I've had the unfortunate task of trying to tidy up my studio space and whenever that happens I can't find diddly squat and my favourite glass pen is amongst those items I can't find right now. Can you relate? But that aside it still performs like a glass dip pen and it should do the same job. It's the one I use for masking fluid and everything else. Now, I quite liked how it initially started off. It held the ink quite well, although this isn't a review about my glass pen here, but it still had quite a relatively consistent flow. It worked well for line work, obviously, but as well, it worked quite nicely for doing all those little tiny dots on areas where I just didn't want to draw lines. I also thought using a mid-tone paper would be a good way to see just how much it stands out. So if I'd have used it on white paper, obviously that's not a fair chance. And I do do two other pictures on black paper, but I wanted to see how well it would work over something in between and whether it would stand out enough. Normally when I use a white ink, it is the De La Roni white ink. You, you've seen me use it before on various other videos and that's more like a gouache. It, it applies pretty thickly, but it's nice and opaque and does the job. Not so great for using with a dip pen, unfortunately, which is why this sort of grabbed my attention. I thought this would be a nice alternative to using gel pens because sometimes they just don't quite have enough opacity or a nice consistent flow. And like I mentioned, for the most part, it was pretty good and pretty consistent using it with this medium. I did, however, find I had to keep going back to refresh the nib more than perhaps a regular ink that I'd use or a drawing ink, for example. And I suppose it's got quite a heavy acrylic element to it. I don't know, but yes, that was a bit of a downside there. It does dry quite quickly on the nib and you have to keep reapplying it. So onto the second picture and I thought we'll just use a brush for this one and see how it goes. The initial application was very nice. However, wasn't quite as opaque as I was expecting considering the consistency. And yes, I definitely kept closing the bottle, shaking it and then using it again because it does separate quite quickly over time. So bear that in mind if you're going to get this yourself. I didn't dilute any of this ink on this picture either, nor did I on the previous one. I wanted to use it neat in its opaque glory it claims to have. And all in all, even though, yes, you can still see a lot of the paper beneath it, I am still quite impressed with how much of a presence this has on the page. I might have unfairly used this as well on this particular paper as it is a black watercolour paper and obviously watercolour papers can just vary with how they handle inks. So I'm going to assume a lot of it was absorbed in, like that the carrying liquid was absorbed in and perhaps didn't give the chance to smooth those colours out for want of better words there. But saying that though, 
all of the brush strokes that I made this first time round. I'm quite happy with them. Everything was defined enough. There were no ambiguous, oh, is it something I want to rub out? Or is it something I want to keep kind of lines there? You put the paint down, well, the ink down, and there it was. You knew it was there. I did go over and give the bird a second coat and that made it all the more vibrant and because again it's an ink even though it's not a super runny ink it was a quite a quick process it dried quick enough to go straight in there for the second coat I thought for the reflection I'd just leave it to one coat though just so we have I guess a bit of a comparison there and yes you can tell next to it it's not quite as opaque but that's fine that kind of fits with the reflection that's going on here so I can't grumble and so far I am actually pretty impressed by this ink. I know a little while ago I did a video using the watercolours by Stuart Semple and I wasn't massively impressed or enamoured by them but I do want to put across I don't hate Stuart Semple products I actually quite like them I have quite a few of their other ones as well and I, I appreciate the cause behind everything so I just didn't like the watercolours. I'm just putting that out there. For the third and final picture here, I thought let's do a very handsome raven or a crow. I'll let you guys decide which one it is. And I wanted to see how this would perform by diluting it. So having slightly different degrees of whiteness on there to get some depth and details in. It was actually quite tricky to do because obviously I've watered it down. It's going to change how it looks as it dries so there was a little bit of guesswork there as to how opaque and how white it would be but you know to overcome that you could be sensible unlike me and do some swatches beforehand and just have a few samples of each dilution and then you'll know roughly how it's going to behave I like the fact that even though I'd watered it down and some areas had pooled slightly on the page when it did dry then it remained pretty consistent which I was quite impressed about and obviously I'm adding the colour in there almost neat. I think I just watered it down a little bit because I wanted the flow to be better. But aside from that, the bits I'm adding now are pretty much as close to concentrated as you can get. And I like the fact that it didn't overwhelm those lighter layers. And it just helped to add those highlights everywhere that I wanted to do. I did end up switching to a finer brush though because I was just a little bit tired of having to keep cleaning the dip pen and then reapplying it that way. It worked better with the ink watered down but still it, it does kind of dry quite quickly. And for me using a finer brush just seemed to work a little bit better for me. It was really nice as well to add those really bold areas and have them show up straight away when I returned to using it neat and when it came to adding a little bit more depth to those highlights depth to those highlights that's an interesting phrase it worked out quite nicely adding a diluted version and it didn't alter anything that I'd laid down before it just enhanced it and made it look nice and I was quite happy with it now do I think it's worth it I mean it all in all, including postage, it cost me about £17 to get this ink. And for me personally, that's quite a lot of money for an ink. Now, I do see that I'm going to get quite a lot of use out of it. It's relative, relatively adaptable as well with a brush and a dip pen, apart from the issues I've mentioned throughout the video. I think if I'm going to sit down and spend a long time doing a drawing or a painting with this, then yes, it's a good investment. I quite like how adaptable it to be and how user friendly it was. I also think I'd use it for adding highlights on marker work etc etc but to a certain extent for perhaps a more casual drawing or just an enjoyment piece or maybe just wanting to sit and be comfortable whilst drawing on my sofa or something absolutely not no use a gel pad definitely use a gel pad. As for comparing it to other white inks, that might have to be a video for another time. Of course, if you've all enjoyed this one enough, then I will follow it up. And of course, that's also if you want to see me do that. I don't have a huge array of white inks, but I can quite happily patch together a video using them all and help you make your minds up too. For me personally though, yeah, I, I, I don't regret buying it. I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. I quite like the fact I can at least use a dip pen with it as well as a brush. And 
you know what, sometimes I just want a material to be as flexible as possible. I'm happy with how it stood out on mid-tone paper and with a couple of coats how well it stood out on black paper. And I also like the fact that I could water it down to gather different levels of tone. But of course, let me know down below what you guys think. There should be a couple more videos on screen I think you're going to enjoy. Of course, thank you so much for watching, especially if you've stayed here this long. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!